This is Craig with the Karshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to go through the last practice task for Objective 4.1 in the Microsoft Office Specialist 2016 Study Guide for Microsoft Excel Expert. Let's get started. So for these practice tasks, we need to go on to our home sales worksheet. And what we need to do is convert the existing chart to a dual axis chart with the average price data series plotted on the secondary axis. So I'm not a big fan of the charts in this section. So what we're going to do is we'll go through the practice tasks as they're laid out in the book first. And then at the end, what we'll do is uh, I'll spend a few minutes for those that are interested and, and, and make some changes that'll make this a much more visually appealing and, in my opinion, informative chart. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to copy this tab so we have one to work on for the second half. I'm going to do that just by holding the control key and dragging over. And you'll notice now I have Home Sales and Home Sales 2, which is my copy. So we'll start off on Home Sales. And we need to make this a multi-axis chart. Uh, there's a couple ways we can do them. Do that. I'll show you both ways. Uh, one is by selecting the chart. We can go into Design. And we can go into Change Chart Type. Once we're into Chart Type, we can select combo at the bottom of the list and it gives us an option here at the bottom uh, of how we want our chart laid out. So in this case we want the average price on the secondary axis. So by selecting this toggle box here for secondary axis we can indicate that we want the average price to go there. Um, now in the example they have it set up as a column for the average price and a line for the home sold and we can click OK here there's our layout and then all we need to do now is save this as a template which is our second practice task and in order to do that we can just right click while we're on the home sales chart we can go to save as template and we can call it um, MOS Expert Style. We can save it. And then what we need to do is confirm that it's available in our chart selector. So we can go to Insert. Um, we can actually select any chart here. And at the, at the top here, where it says Templates, Sure enough, there is our Microsoft Office Specialist Expert Style in our template. So this, this can actually be handy. If you're working in a document where you want to have multiple charts and you want them all to look the same but don't want to have to go through formatting each of them individually, create one how you want it, save it as a template, and then all of your future charts will maintain that style. So that wraps up the practice tasks as they're written out in the book. Um, however, let's spend a couple minutes and, and make what I think is a pretty subpar chart here into, into something that, that I wouldn't be embarrassed of. And uh, we'll, we'll do that quickly here in just a few minutes. So I'm going to move over to my copied area uh, where uh, we can start right from scratch again. So we, I showed you one way to change the axes that the data is plotted on. Uh, there's another way. So you can actually just select the, the plot that you're interested in, or the series, I should say. Now, one thing I'll note, when you select a series, you're going to notice up in the formula bar. So this is your description of the series. And so up here includes where your, your name is going to be, where the data comes from, and where the x-axis coordinates that it lines up with uh, are all la loaded up here. The last thing is the series number. So that's number two. You'll notice that we have two series on this chart. We can only see one of them. We can tell there's two series. One, by the fact that there's a legend that shows home sold here. Also, that there's a two here. Now, I can actually toggle to the different series, even though, you know, normally I would kind of click on it in order to select it, but I can't because it's, it's not visible. By hitting the control or holding the control key and then using the up and down arrow, I can toggle through the different series. So now my formula bar has changed. It's now showing me series one. And I can see on the chart itself that it has highlighted the series plots, even though I can't see them. But now I can... Oh, let me try that again here. I'm going to right-click to select one of these, 
and I'm going to format this data series. Now what I can do, I can also choose to put this on the secondary axis at this point. Okay, so there it's now on the secondary axis. Now this first step doesn't help us a whole lot because they're overlapping the charts. So what we will do is we are going to change for our home sold. We're going to change the uh, the chart type. So I can do that here, change series chart type. And I'm. it takes us back to where we were before, but we'll change the home sold to a line. We'll click OK. So now we have uh, something quite similar to what we had previously, where we have a column chart overlaid with a line chart. Um, what I've done is I've switched the axes here so that uh, I have the average price on the left and the home sold on the right. So a few things to remember when you're designing charts. Um, I like to imagine that um, imagine that black ink costs more than gold. And so you want to have as little as possible on your chart. So there's, there's a few things that we'll do to make that happen. One, the first thing that jumps out at me, though, with this chart is when I look at the primary axis here, it, it doesn't start at zero. And, and while there may be some circumstances where that's appropriate, uh, I'm, I'm not comfortable with having a series that starts at 520,000. So I'm going to select this axis. Now, when I do that, you're going to notice over here um, there are tools to work with this axis. So I'm not worried about the alignment now. I'm going to work on my axis options, and I'm just going to resize things a little bit to make it a little easier for us. So now I can tell Excel what I want to have as my maximum and my minimum. In this case, it's automatically chosen 520,000. I'm going to overwrite that with zero. As soon as I've done that, now you notice that my axis goes starts all the way at zero on both the primary and the secondary axis. All right, so already in my opinion, that, that's, a, that's a big improvement. Um, the, the change in average sale price is far less dramatic now than what it appeared in the first image. And in my opinion, that's a more accurate reflection of, of reality. Second, we have a little too much detail on this chart uh, with, for example, the sales price. So the fact that it's hundreds of thousands, we don't necessarily need to have that in the axis itself. So again, I'm going to select on this. I can go into this section here and where it says number. We can change it here in our labels. All right, let me start over here. So access options, display units, I'm going to put thousands. Okay, as soon as I've done that, you've noticed that now we've changed from the hundreds of thousands with lots of extra zeros now to just three three numbers, so that's simpler. It's showing the unit label. I'm going to remove that. Uh, normally, I would have that in the legend or somewhere else. Um, and so you can already see that we now have more visual information, less textual information, which is important. Last, uh, or I shouldn't say last, next, I don't like this many grid lines. I know some chartists, they don't like any at all, and they say that viewers can can discern without using them. I find I prefer seeing a few of them, but not too many. In this case, I like to have three of them, and I'll show you how I do that. So I will select this axis again, and in my axis options section, what I can do in this major units section, I can change that, and that's going to tweak how many grid lines are shown. So in this case, there's 700,000. I want to have break it into four sections, which will leave me with three grid lines. So I divide that in half, that's 350. Divide that in half one more time, that's 175. So in this major unit section, I'm going to type in 175,000. Okay, so now we've gone to four grid lines. Now this one at the top doesn't do us any good. Um, now there may be a better way of solving this, but we can get rid of that top grid line by changing our maximum. So instead of 700,000, I'm going to change that to 690,000 and watch what happens. All right. So now on our chart, that top boundary grid line is, is gone and, and we can no longer see it. 
Next thing I would like to do is have my secondary axis, its plot points also line up to what was shown before. So what we're going to do here to make this uh, match up better, I'm going to set my maximum to 28 instead of 30. I don't have any values that are greater than 28. And I am going to set my units. Oh, let's change the minimum to zero. I don't like that. Or to minus two. I'm going to change it to zero. OK. And I'm going to set my major units to a quarter of 28, which is seven. All right. So now we've done a couple things here. Now these grid lines actually match up for both the primary and the secondary axis. Um, and I'll do one more thing just to make it a little bit more clear. I'm going to set my maximum at uh, 27.9 just to take that last label off the top. All right, so now we have a much cleaner chart than what we had originally started with. I find it's much more accurate as well compared to what we originally seen in its impression. Now, there are certainly a few more changes that, that I would make. Uh, I would change the the months across the bottom and maybe change the uh, the legend as well a little bit. But as you can see, there's a few quick changes, a few principles that I'd like to follow when I build my charts that make it a much, in my opinion, much cleaner, much easier to read chart than before. So just as a comparison, here is our revised version. And, and look at how much busier this uh, original one was. Um, so that's all we need to do here for practice tasks for Objective 4.1. Thanks for watching, and I'll look forward to having you join me when we work on Objective 4.2 soon. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.